Hello and welcome to MFM Reaper. This video will show you how to assign your effects to your controller using CSI. Use the link in the description to download two things there. One is the compressor template on the right. It's not too complex and it's what we'll be using for this walkthrough. And on the left is a numerical list magnified to the width of the envelopes for the effects parameters. This makes working out which parameters are what number a lot easier. I thought for context I'd just quickly run you through what I'm using the buttons for. So global view as standard, as programmed in CSI, is tracks and buses as a zone. I've added five or six other things to that in the CSI page. The plugin button shows me the effects on the channel one to five in this case. Pressing the rotary goes on to open the plugin itself. As you can see three and four haven't got a map there in the upper display. The send button takes the MCU into the send zone. If I press that again, it'll vertically zoom any of the envelopes of the sends from that channel. I'm sending to my effects rack of seven effects and all of the volumes for those sends are mirrored on the faders on the controller. Global view closes all that down, takes me out of that. And select on any one of the channels held down will give me the volume automation and it will already come in in touch mode. Global view puts me in trim mode, hides any of the envelopes, and obviously goes back to the track and buses zone. So let's look at the plugin zone. Choose a plugin. I'll choose the first one. It's uh, the Royal Compressor. It's easier looking at your plugins like this with the UI like this for what we're doing. Pressing on the second rotary gives me the second plugin, which is the Townhouse. The third rotary give me the third plugin. That's not actually mapped. That's why none of the uh, display changed. Same with the fourth one. That's still not mapped. But the fifth one is. I added selecting touch mode to the plugin button uh, because I like to see the envelopes of what I'm actually drawing at the time and it shows me the envelopes of anything else that's already existing there. So added to the global view button is the action hide all envelopes and unselect all envelopes. So will just show me the track again and the plugin button as well as show me what plugins are on the track itself will also show me all of the effects envelopes of that track so by adding some custom actions to the CSI text I'm keeping the send envelopes the volume envelopes separate from the effects envelopes and it just prevents it getting a little bit messy and confusing the method that I actually use to insert the plugins via contextual toolbars is another video under the day. However you like to add a plugin, Command F or whichever method you use, add a compressor. If you've got the townhouse, add the townhouse compressor and then you'll just mirror exactly what I'm doing. But it won't be any different really for, it'd just be different number values for different compressors. And that's really down to the order in which the parameters come which is why I made that file on the left. That should be magnified to the correct height. You can just lay it next to the uh, plugin like this. First thing we need to do is give the zone, this effect zone, a name. And it needs to be the exact name of the plugin. So if you've got a floating window open, double click it, it'll make it an effects chain window. Opposite click with the mouse, rename the effects instance, and you can just copy that. If you know of another procedure, another method, faster, better, let me know. Be glad to hear from you. It's probably my schoolboy error, but when I've been looking at the names on the upper display, they give me the first six characters of what's inside the inverted commas, VST, BX, etc. So when I got to this stage, I actually renamed the effects instance Townhouse. And I'd also recommend, not that I do it here, but leave a space at the beginning of any name you put into a six or seven character LED. Then you won't just get one continuum of words across the top there. Whichever way you decide to do this, the most important thing is the name in the zone file is exactly the name of the plugin. I've already posted this question uh, on the forum, which if you've not used it, is extremely helpful. Some great people on there. And for now, I'm quite happy with the fact I can see that that's the townhouse. And when I select it, I can take you through how to put the parameters to the plugin. I apologize, that's quite a long intro into actually getting around to doing what I was talking about doing. Initially, in a very long time ago, when I first started hooking up the MIDI controllers to the VSTs, I would try and emulate and mirror the plugin. Don't do that. The simplest thing to do is to think of your 
controller as a hardware unit, and everything comes in the same place all of the time, regardless of the plugin's layout. So, attack, release, threshold, ratio, range, mix, in and out. So attacks the first one and looking at the parameters on there it's six seven is release now we'll look at seven and eight i haven't got an input control on the townhouse but some compressors have so resist the temptation to fill that in with something else just leave it blank there isn't an input control eight is the gain or output control the mix parameter is parameter 10. If the plugin itself doesn't have a mix control, you can always use Reaper's mix. I always make sure there's a mix if it's EQ or anything. You, to be able to blend something's really useful. I've stuck with the word range on Fader 5, and I'm applying it in this case to Headroom. It's also a regular terminology on uh, gates. The so Fader 4, that's going to be ratio. And if you look to the numerical list, you can see that that's five as its assignment. So always leave a space after the FX param. Make sure there's a space before the number or it won't work. And where you're not using something, no action, capital N, capital A. And then that fader won't start moving around with other things, which can sometimes happen if you've not specified the no action to it. I don't know why I'm closing it down. We haven't finished. We need to sort the displays out. I've already inserted the attack release and so on and so on. That, that was in the template. But you then need to put the correct parameters to it. So fader 1 will match display lower 1. Fader 2, uh, display lower 2 and so on. Just make sure they're the same numbers. And then no actions in the display upper 7 and display lower 7. And that will come up blank. What I did add to this even though I'm trying not to put too much onto the MCU, I want, to, I want to do all this with the SL, but that's still in MIDI mode at the moment, is um, a sidechain filter, which I also use as high-pass filter uh, on EQs. So that's the furthest left rotary, and then the furthest right rotary for drive. Don't forget to copy and paste this into the bottom of your working Zon file. Okay, so I'm going to open a plugin. Rotary press 2 gives me the second plugin in the chain. That's the townhouse. Attack and release. You can see them working. The envelopes being created are out of sight, so if I press plugin, it will vertically zoom and show me those. Because the MCU is motorized faders and there's MIDI feedback to them, when I go into the plugin, the faders are in the correct place for the parameters of the plugin itself, so there's no big jumps or anything like that. As I keep moving faders and keep creating envelope lanes, all I need to do is press plug in and it will zoom vertically to the envelope lanes there. Also included in the uh, plug in button is close effects chain windows. That's how I get to see the envelopes without the plug in there. Black 76 isn't mapped, so moving attack and release actually moves the attack and release of the previous working plug in the townhouse. Now, this Klanghelm compressor, pretty popular compressor. Um, a lot more options of what you can do there. So again, just take the numerical list, line it up next to the parameters, and just do exactly what we did with the townhouse. As I mentioned, I've been using a MIDI version of this whole setup for a long time. The difference now is being able to uh, use MIDI feedback with motorized faders on the MCU. But the smaller stuff, the dial stuff and buttons, I'm going to assign to the SL25. If you're familiar with any of the other videos I've made, you're probably familiar with the fact that I use a hotkey system. So let's talk about getting rid of envelopes. Control is everything to do with track. Shift means delete. E is for envelopes. So control shift and E. That deletes the effects envelopes. Control shift and S will delete the send envelopes. Okay, I've used quite a few parameters of the MJUC. Just click the plugin button there to zoom them. I'm going to add another effect. I'm going to add the Royal Compressor, which is plugin one. And I'll move a few of those parameters just to see that I think the labeling system is really good. It's quite clear which plugin is which. And you can press plugin to zoom all the envelopes vertically again. Global view shuts down the envelope lanes takes it into trim read 
and toggles. The faders at the moment are still affecting tracks till you choose a plugin. So send envelopes and plugin envelopes, effects envelopes, you can view separately and delete separately. I've done a video on sends and I'll probably do another as I change slightly how I work with those. I hope this has given you some kind of insight into the way I'm working with Reaper. I'm really interested to know how you're working with Reaper. And if nothing else, I hope this has given you the confidence to dip your toe into programming your own effects and going through this so you get your own setup the way you want it. It's okay copying other people's stuff, but they don't always set it out the way you want and then you have to know how to modify it. So good luck with it and thanks for watching.